Let's talk about the common ways that beginner miniature painters mess up. What up, Mini Family? I'm Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're talking about messing up, something that even the most proficient miniature painters can't entirely avoid. So we'll talk about the most common ways beginners mess up, how to fix it now, and how to avoid it in the future. So let's get started with number one. Number one, thin your paints. A lot of beginner painters use paint straight out of the pot, and thick paint like this can show brush strokes and also obscure the detail of your model. The texture applied to your miniature on otherwise smooth surfaces can also be undesirable at times. So how do you fix this? Most of the time, the texture from thick paint like this isn't really as big a deal as people make it to be. Simply paint over the model and you'll be fine. But in cases where it's really bad, you can consider stripping your model. Stripping is a topic in and of itself that we won't cover in this video, but a Google search will go far if you are in need. To avoid it in the future, avoid using paint straight out of the pot. Always thin it a little bit with some water unless you know what you're doing. Number two, applying washes haphazardly. A lot of beginners apply washes in a very aggressive way, either all over the model and letting it pool in unnatural areas, or they don't mind where the wash is drying next to unwashed areas causing nasty tide marks. So how do you fix these two things? To fix the nasty tide marks, simply take your original base tone color and apply it over the troublesome areas. However, it's not so simple in the case of you washing your entire miniature. Oftentimes when we apply a wash to a miniature, it darkens down our original base tone. And when you apply that original base tone, it can look out of place, being much brighter. So what we have to do is take some of that wash and mix it with our original base tone until we get a color that's close to what our shaded down color looks like. And then use this color to apply over those areas where shade pooled in places where we didn't want it to pool. But how do we avoid this in the future? Well, when you're applying a wash, give the miniature a once over, looking for places where it pooled in unnatural areas, things that are like on flat areas or areas that are pointed towards your light source. Use your damp brush and soak up these areas like a sponge. In the case of nasty tide marks, look for areas where your shade ended next to a base coat that isn't washed. What you want to do is take your brush and pull the pigmentation toward the area that should be shaded. This technique is called feathering and it's used for a lot of different things. Number three, many beginners always use a black undercoat. Many hobbyists have a cult-like desire to prime everything in black and this can oftentimes make life pretty difficult, especially if what you're trying to paint is white or yellow or a light blue or any one of those lighter colors. Using white or even gray can make your following base coats a whole heck of a lot easier, but I want to try to explain why a lot of people like to use blacks all the time. And that's because on certain models that have hard to reach areas, if you end up missing a spot that's down there, it'll look black, like a shadow might look. If you undercut with something like white and miss an area that's in a hard to reach area with a paintbrush, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. It'll be white or gray. Depending on how you're going to apply your first base coat with a paintbrush or an airbrush, that can help you decide whether or not you want to use a white undercoat or a black undercoat. If the manager has a lot of hard to reach areas and you know you're gonna struggle with a paintbrush, maybe go with black. If you're doing a white looking object like some snow or a stormtrooper or any kind of space marine that's white, consider using a white or a gray undercoat just to make your life easier. Number four, trying super hard on everything you paint. Many beginners start out by having a desire to want to put their heart and soul in everything that they paint. And this is a good notion, but a lot of miniature painters start out in miniature war games where some of the armies consist of 50 to 100 models or even more. If you try to paint every single one of those miniatures to the best of your abilities, you are going to get burnt out and you are going to stop painting and you may never paint again, or maybe not for a very long time. It's mentally freeing to know that you don't have to try your hardest on every single miniature and you can still get a really cool looking result when your miniatures are all done in a squad and on the tabletop. As an example, look at my unit of wild riders for my growing wanderer army. I didn't try as hard as I could. I didn't maximize the contrast everywhere. I didn't add cool horse hair texture. I didn't do the whole nine yards, but I was able to finish it. And as a unit, they look pretty cool. 
because of the mental stamina that I saved, not blowing my entire load on painting this entire unit, I'm able to continue on with the rest of the army, paint characters and other units, and hopefully by the end of it, have a fully painted Wanderer army. Number five, speckling with white primer. A lot of beginners, when they use white primer, especially from aerosol cans for the first time, they get a texturized surface with their primer. And there's two kinds of speckling that I want to distinguish between. There's the kind of speckling that leaves a dotted white surface on your miniature, but no actual physical texture. And there's the kind that leaves a dotted surface and also leaves a physical texture. We're talking about the kind that actually leaves a rough physical texture. When you're priming, you want to shoot for days with a humidity of 40 to 50%, not days that are super dry. And the drier the day, the closer you want to be to the miniature with your aerosol priming can. The farther the particle has to travel, the longer it has to dry midair and then stick to your miniature. Obviously on days that are super dry, you don't want to have your primer can super close to your miniatures and then be caking primer on and obscuring a bunch of details. So just use common sense in regards to the weather and your primer can and the distance between your miniature and the primer can and you'll be good to go. Number six, stripping everything. This isn't necessarily an issue with beginners, but I think an issue with a lot of hobbyists. There's a desire to redo stuff that we've done over and over and over again. And the reason why this happens is because throughout the process of painting a unit or a single character, we become better painters and we know what we're capable of. We see what we've accomplished and we want to do better and improve upon ourselves. I might argue that it's a better idea just to let it exist as part of your miniature painting history to see where you come from and how you've improved, kind of like a breadcrumb trail. If we strip everything that we paint, we will literally never finish anything. We'll never move on and never learn how to be okay with a little bit of mediocrity and we'll constantly be wanting to fight ourselves and redo stuff. This is especially true for people who are trying to paint models for miniature war games. You have a ton more models to work on. It's okay to set aside one, be okay with it and move on to the next one. Take all the things that you learned from the previous models and apply it to the new ones. Stripping models can also nefariously be used as an excuse to not paint models. Oh, I can't paint my character because he's currently sitting in a bucket of simple green and I need to wait for the paint to strip off of it. This is preventing us from painting more miniatures and this excuse should be eradicated. Number seven, basing miniatures after you paint them. A lot of times basing is an afterthought and once you have a fully painted pretty model having to deal with basing can be kind of annoying so we kind of skimp on it a little bit. Another thing about painting after you've based your model is that you have to worry about getting dirt and other basing materials on the miniature like PVA glue and stuff like that after it's already been painted and that can be kind of a worry that you can avoid simply by applying basing materials to the miniature before it's even primed. You can prime the basing materials and the model at the same time and be ready once done painting. There's a cool YouTuber named Kujo Painting who shows an example of how easy it is to paint a base that has been primed in a particular way. So check out that video in the description below. Number eight, not using a wet palette. For the longest time when I was getting used to miniature painting, I used a floor tile, a very flat, object that didn't absorb any moisture and this works but the issue with it is that it doesn't help with how fast acrylic paint dries so you're fighting the consistency of your paint and also wasting paint at the same time i made a video about wet palettes discussing them and also the things that i learned about them that you can check out right here but the main benefit of a wet palette is that it keeps the consistency of your paint pretty constant over your painting session meaning that you can paint reliably and also not worry about wasting as much paint as with a dry palette all right that's the main list of the ways that i think most miniature painters mess up but let's talk about two bonus tip bonus tip number one don't buy fine cast Bonus tip number two, don't get involved in commissions too early, especially if you're a beginner. I know the exact feeling that runs through someone's head when someone offers them a commission. They're like, I can learn how to paint better and get paid at the same time. This sounds totally amazing, but it really isn't. And let me explain why from my personal experience. In the beginning, it can seem like a lot of fun. You can learn a lot and also get paid while doing it like previously mentioned. But there comes a certain turning point where you get tired of painting the miniatures that belong to someone else. Either they're not miniatures you want to paint or they're just repetition, the same one over and over again. 
you start painting for pennies on the hour and sometimes you feel guilty when you want to paint your own stuff and you have commissions kind of lingering around. It can almost be a little bit mentally imprisoning having a commission lingering over your shoulder when you want to paint stuff that's more fun for you and you know maybe doesn't necessarily pay but what I might suggest is that you should just try harder paint your own miniatures and then in the end the reward is getting to keep them and being satisfied with that paint job. That's it for the list of ways that I think most miniature painters can mess up. Do you guys think I missed any big ones? This is a list from my personal experience and may not completely echo yours, but let me know if I missed any in the comment section below. But for now, let's check out a mini person's model. We're singing. We're singing. Yeah. Drive. Google Drive. Oh man, goddamn. There is a lot. Oh my fucking God. There's a lot of submissions. All right. Who are we doing? Who are we doing? Who are we doing? Who are we doing? Let's do a laverick. A Laverick is a guy who hangs out on my Twitch stream a lot. If you didn't know, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash miniac underscore. Check me out. But let's look at a Laverick's miniature. He did a 40K model, an Imperial Guard model, and holy cow. I love the dirt, the dusting at the bottom of his robe. He got achieved a really nice skin tone. I like the rusty metal bases where the edges have like a silver tone, but the rest of them, it has like a reddish brown tone. I think that's pretty cool. I dig the whole model as a whole. It's kind of a really like kind of snooty like Imperial Guard pose. I think that works out pretty cool. Thanks for this submission, Elaverick. If you want to see one of your miniatures at the end of one of my videos, check out the community highlight link in the description below. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, I have a Redbubble account where I'm selling a t-shirt and a sticker with my logo on it. Subscribe or die. And most importantly, don't forget to pay my minis! Don't buy fine cast. Looking, fuck me in the butt. This is really hard to do. Ball sack.